I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. Everybody, how you doing today? Welcome to Manhattan, New York City, and this is a video that I started last year in uh, north of Chicago. I went to the gravesite of the great, the wonderful, the beloved director John Hughes. John Hughes passed away August 6th, 2009. Oh, okay, I guess I yeah. And yeah. I was looking for. The place in New York City where he passed away because it's well known he had a heart attack on the street and where that heart attack occurred is right down here and I know the exact spot maybe a little morbid but there used to be a shrine to him there I don't think there is any more that's been uh, almost 14 years but it's right down here there's some water valves on the street where he sat down and I'm gonna see if I can find those still and then the video is gonna continue over to the uh, footage I shot in Chicago, or north of Chicago, at the cemetery where I had, I can't remember what I said, talked about, talked about John Hughes probably a lot, you know, and um, met a really interesting person there, you know, through some of that footage. So this video's been a long time in the making. I waited, waited for the uh, time that I could get back to New York to do this. And we're at 55th and Avenue of the Americas, busy, 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 and we're gonna walk this way. Just here at the corner, if you look down, See Radio City Music Hall in the background. Now I'm not sure which direction John Hughes was walking that morning, but it could have been east or west. I'm not exactly sure. But see that restaurant there, Benoit? Right there. That's where you cross from this side of the street south. It was early in the morning, and what happened was he stumbled across this street here, 55th Street, to catch his breath, and he sat on the water valves at 8.55 a.m. He's walking around here, and I'm gonna have to cut through here again. I was just walking this way before. And, like I said, he walked across the street, so heading south, and there should be some water valves, and that's where he stopped to catch his breath. And at 8.55, 911 was called, 15 minutes later they arrived and he was unconscious. So those water valves somewhere here. Here they are. This is the exact spot. Right here. These water valves is where John Hughes sat and where he passed away. And there was a shrine. Somebody brought out 16 candles. And yeah, it's called Benoit Restaurant if you're looking for the location on 55th here. 60 West 55th. So, wow, that's, um, you know, I've been planning to come out here for a while, and it's actually, it's kind of heavy, because he's, I mean, he's everyone's, of a certain age, and kids today, everybody loves John Hughes movies, and to think it was right here, right here where he passed away. Wow. 
It's a little heavy. I'm a little more, um, just feels odd. Right there. Now, we're going to cut to the footage I shot in, um, north of, I keep saying in Chicago, but it's in north of Chicago where he's, uh, buried. And, yeah. New York City, right here, John Hughes, right there, wow, and I'm not saying that wow, like, like, cool, I'm not saying that wow, like, to emphasize anything, it's just really, kind of hit me a little harder than I thought it would, seeing the exact spot, also, I've been looking for it for a long time, I finally see it, almost a little starstruck by water house, but it's so bizarre. So if you look right behind me, there's that archway that I just drove through. The other entrance I showed you is, you said like the offices, and it's just a small turnaround. I made that mistake a few years ago when I came out here, and I parked across the street and walked through, like alongside the office. But you can actually come through that giant archway and make an immediate left, and there's John Hughes right there behind me. We're gonna walk over there right now. So yeah, I've been here. I did a whole video about John Hughes' life in Michigan, some of the places having to do with his movies and his uh, I may have visited his home I can't remember uh, but I ended up here at his at his final resting place but I want to do a separate video now again showing his um, where he sadly passed away and now where he's laid to rest and we'll walk over there now like I said it's just the one the giant archway off of uh, Spruce Road then Lake Road go straight in where Lake Road ends and make a left so there's another entrance far over there, but that's not the one you want to go into. You can. You know, it's a nice walk. I did it before. But this is a little faster. Here's the final resting place of John Hughes. Wow. And I believe when I was here last time, I don't think his wife had passed away. And John Wilden Hughes Jr., 1950 to 2009, Husband, father, grandfather, Nancy Lou Hughes, 1951 to 2019, wife, mother, grandmother. And definitely one of the more impressive um, monuments I've seen in a cemetery for a family. And I'm not sure what's around back. It's just. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been out here. This is pretty impressive. And there's always deer in cemeteries because of the flowers. And I'm assuming that the, the rich family here is what their last name is. Probably enjoyed wildlife. And Metcalf, we're in the Chicago area. Of course, um... Lori Metcalf from Roseanne, the Scream movies, one of the one of the greats. I don't think they're related, but Metcalf, Chicago area, you never know. And I did 
I'm pretty sure I mentioned um, last time I was here, Keith Magnuson, who was a hockey player for Chicago Blackhawks. He actually died in a car accident just outside of Toronto back in 2003. And uh, he's at rest here too, somewhere, and it's not too far from here. I can't remember, I'm not going to. It's on my other video, and yeah, much love to Keith Magnuson. It's gonna walk right here, because it was a black granite one. I'll go back to John Hughes in a moment. But yeah, it was a black granite one that said Magnuson very prominently on it. Nah, Neeson, Gosh Gary, and Lindquist. I don't think he's far from this area though. That's an interesting grave right there. Look at that. Wow. Make our way back over to Mr. and Mrs. Hughes. So you can see here, this bench, this is part of the Hughes family plot. It has the same uh, leaves, I guess, leaves. I'm used to saying Toronto Maple Leafs. Leaves or garland around that the grave does as well. So family members, anyone can just come and sit, think, reflect, which is what I plan on doing right after I leave something for both of them that have been here. I'll put this on the other side. Uh, yeah. Now, one second here. So while I came out here for John Hughes, I, of course, I'm going to mention his wife. I don't know much about his wife, but I can only imagine with the amount of time he spent writing and on sets, what Nancy probably had to put up with in a good way. I mean, he's going to be away a lot. He's working hard and she's working just as hard. Um, I'm not sure what career she had, if, she, if her career was as a homemaker with the kids. And that's possible and that's just as difficult, of course. So I'm not sure what Nancy Hughes, but I'm sure putting up with John Hughes was, you know, had his moments. Because he was, he was a very creative man and they, they're gonna, and he's very busy and very prolific. He seemed to be always working and always writing, but I mean, he could pound out a script in a weekend, of course. But definitely one of the greats. So, but rest in peace, Nancy, who I just realized passed away just three years ago, and of course John Hughes. We'll end it here. We'll thank Mr. Hughes, all of us, for our childhood, right? For our teen years, maybe. For our youth. For what he did for us. Sixteen candles. Pretty in pink. Some kind of wonderful. Uh, weird science. I'm thinking of the teen movies right now. And then, of course, Home Alone. Curly Sue. My personal favorites. And Uncle Buck. But my personal favorites Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And National Lampoon's Vacation. He had a hand in so many movies. He was a ghostwriter on some movies, and then I was named credited to a, a few movies, but that's John Hughes, man. Anyone from a certain generation. Any, I think kids today still watch his movies. So, probably not as much as we did back in the day. Breakfast Club. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I almost forgot Breakfast Club. Because that's as soon as I thought of I was going to say, we can all quote something from a John Hughes movie, and Breakfast Club probably for most people probably the most quotable I would think I tend to I I, I rely on quotes from planes, trains, automobiles and vacation to get me through but breakfast club for a lot of people and you know I'm a kid that's my job that's Uncle Buck I mean there's quotes from every movie 16 candles I mean if you want to quote uh, well, I don't want to swear, but I can't believe they forgot my effing birthday. Does Barry Manilow know you raided his wardrobe? Is that the line from Breakfast Club? Like I said, I'm, I can think of more um, breakfast, uh, plane straight of automobiles and a vacation, especially. Bueller? 
<laughs> I forgot about that. Bueller. Yeah, we stopped and see John and Nancy to keep an eye on them. Do you know them? Did you know them? No, we, I, I had met the, the mother, though, over the years here in Lake Forest. Nancy? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's John, John's wife. Yeah, she just passed, she, I guess. Uh, she was a big benefactor. The community lost a lot when she left. I bet. Oh, that's beautiful to hear. I didn't realize she had passed away. It's been a few years yeah. since I've been here. Are you from, his home, are you from uh, Ontario? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a long way. You know that? Big, big hockey fan. Was he? Yeah. No. Right. He was a Red Wing. And, and if you look at Boris Bueller. Oh, uh, yeah, he's wearing, a red, he's wearing a Red Wings jersey in there. Wearing a Red Wing. And you know who it was? Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe. Right. But he was a, a diehard uh, wing fan. Yeah, actually Detroit is, because uh, I love the Leafs. You can see on my license plates. Yeah, I see. Hey, you see that? A, I'm a, another club on hard times. Oh, no, we're getting there. Well, Come on. Getting we're getting well, the there. Six is taking some bumps. Yeah, exactly. Detroit, Chicago right now. Not so good, but Toronto's back. We've got the greatest player playing for us, but it's a matter of. seems to be in the middle of the heat. Always. I don't know about the Rangers. I don't hear much. They're, about they're doing really well, too. Yeah, it's going to be a good season for them. But Boston always squeaks by. They do. Every season. They're, they never have to rebuild. No, like they a, always make some trades. Yeah, they, they just always. They're never on the bottom. But Chicago right now, not looking good for the next oh, couple of years. Well, our, our two guys, uh, Taze and uh, Kane. Uh, you know, they're, they're getting old. And, yeah. Uh, when you stay up there, you know yourself. You don't get good drafts. Yeah. Exactly. They got to I think they they better trade them now or else they're not going to get value back. Yeah, well. Yeah. You know, they've got the no trade and <laughs> they they're about half of the salary cap for exactly. the Blackhawks between the two of them. I know, right? But if they got rid of them, they'd oh, yeah. they'd have to rebuild yeah, and they have they could, uh, But they you're right. Kids. They have to agree to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you! I go there all the time. Oh, do you? I do. We're in the Pelican Bay. Uh, we have a, you know, a huge contingent comes down. Here. Wow. There goes Dave. Here's a picture of me and Dave. So he just yelled out, Bueller, Bueller. And I, he, as you heard, uh, that was a conversation I had with him. By the way, I just talked to him for another half an hour almost uh, about hockey and about Canada, about the United States, about uh, everything. I was, Tropical Storms, Puerto Rico. We were talking about everything. What an amazing man. He has a place here. He has a place up in Ontario, too, where he uh, goes uh, fishing in the summer. And it's freezing cold in Ontario, like northern, north, north. I'm talking 12 hours, 16 hours north of Toronto. It's still cold up there in the summer. Not, I mean, T-shirt, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, and then stays down in Florida in the summer. He's retired. Just a great guy. Wow. But he mentioned Ferris Bueller, and I almost forgot Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's day off. <sighs> That's one of the greatest pleasures of doing this job is meeting friendly people like that. And what a friendly, friendly man. It's so sweet. And he's going to subscribe <laughs> and write in the comments. All right. Lots of movies. Lots of things John Hughes did. Lots of... Uh, just like I said before, our childhood, our teen years, our youth. Provided the entertainment for our youth, the soundtrack to our youth, the blueprint for our youth. Hughes, John Hughes. Rest in peace, Mary and John. And all of you, peace out. Bueller. 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 Bueller, 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 Bueller.